Hello everyone, this is Micro P11 and um, I will demonstrate how you can run SiteLC in a Docker container and uh, you will have access to an API where you can download the actual EGC messages or you can view them in the browser in your own network. Uh, this is proof of concept. You should be able to run this on Windows, Linux, um, Raspberry Pi, wherever you can run a GNU radio. So let's start. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is to download the repository to clone it. So we're going to go to, uh, let's see, Bitbucket, site LC, and so we're going to go to this repository here, and we're going to copy the link to clone it. And then what I'm going to do next is so click on this button, copy that link. Then we're going to go into, I'll bring from the other screen, uh, shift right click and open the PowerShell window. And we're going to say, we're going to paste that thing, that link to clone the repository already exists and it's not an empty great it's because i did not rename the existing one you will not run into this let's make this three so again okay so we have uh, downloaded the repository and the repository contains a Docker Compose file that makes reference to a bunch of images and also contains a GNU radio graph that you can use to demodulate the Inmarsat C signal. So I'm going to run GNU radio companion, which on my machine it's version 3.9. And then this is previously used. I'll say file, open, and we're gonna go to the repository where we downloaded. And there's a folder DR. And we'll open this graph. I do not want to explain more a lot about this graph. Um, currently, I'm using the Osmo Comp Force um, because I have an AirSpy Air device and the bias is set to one. If you want to use an RTL SDR, you will disable this and enable the RTL SDR source. And you may have to play a bit with the parameters. Currently, the um, sample rate is 2.5 mega. You may want to make it smaller. And for a Raspberry Pi, I found that the best works for 1.8 um, or even 1. The frequency is the wrong box. This is the frequency of the um, NCS network coordinating station on in Marsat at 54 degrees west. And it is not quite on frequency. Um, it is just a bit off because I have created a block in this graph that does auto tracking. So once you have it running, it will lock onto that frequency and you can just run it, leave it, let it run forever. And it will 
stay on the frequency. So we have downloaded it and we're going to run it. The, the result of this is, so you see that the blue signal is where the current frequency is right now and we just want to move it into this red area. So I'm going to go and adjust this from 10, 300 to let's say 9,000. And then maybe that was too much. But you see that it starts to, let me see, 9,200. And okay, so now, right now it's demodulating. And what happens is we are sending the demodulated symbols over UDP. In this case, it's 127.0.0.1, which is the local host, and the port is 30,001. And this is the port. Um, you can have multiple, you can send this to multiple places. Um, by adding another UDP sync. And here we have the, the correction 8788. So this is the auto track that corrects, adds one hertz or decreases one hertz to keep up with the frequency as needed. Okay, so this is now locked and the signals, the the demodulated symbols are being sent over UDP. So now we need the actual application. And to do that, we're going to go into the folder where we have downloaded the repository. We're going to open it. Um, actually, you don't need to open anything here. You can just run the command and you would say Docker. I won't remember it. I need to see the content. Let's see what do we have uh, too much. Sorry for that. We need to go into the the repository, which is where is the name? Sitelc dash docker. So cd sitelc dash docker. And this is what I wanted to see. So let's see if I remember. Um, okay, you would need to have Docker installed on your system. On this, this is Windows, so I have Docker for Windows. It's Docker Desktop. I do not know how it is called, but currently it's not running anything. Not no no containers running here. So I'm going to do Docker Compose. Um, the file is. No SSL Docker Compose YAML. So no SSL Docker Compose YAML. And uh, we want to put this up detached minus D. So the command is docker slash compose minus F, the name of the file, up minus D, enter. And then Images are now being downloaded from my repository on Docker Hub. And this is what we'll have running in the end. So we have a reverse proxy. And behind this reverse proxy, we have the API. The API is a .NET API. And the reverse proxy resolves the cores issue. Uh, then we have the decoder, which is listening on port 30001, which is the port where we're transmitting data over UDP from the graph. This decoder extracts the frames and passes the frames to the API. API the API is extracting the actual messages. So if you click on this, you will see that since we're talking 
we have decoded frames. Now these frames are, the data here is a bit maybe inducing you um, a, these are internal ports, so never mind. I'm not going to go there. Suffice it to say that if you send on the port 30,001 as it, is, as it is set up right now, you will be able to receive these frames. And then if we go to the Docker API, you see that the actual frames are being sent, which we'll is wait. And then the frames are being sent to the API and the API is trying to extract the messages. Now, right now, the time is 6.48. We may have to pause this video for some time until some EGCs will arrive. They arrive as the weather bulletins, usually on the hour and sometimes at half hour. Uh, however, how can we see them? If we're going to go to the browser now and we, we go to localhost, Oh, this is a signal being received right now. So localhost and we're in luck, we don't have to wait. And the port where we're listening is 4,500. I think I set it for 4,500, but we're gonna see. So there you go. Uh, the messages, there are like one, two, three messages that were just received. And then if you want to access them through the API, I should publish maybe the API interface somewhere in a RAML file, but anyway, um, we can go into the debug window and go to the where are you network and refresh. And we can copy the, the link for the API, copy URL, and we can open it in a different tab. And there you go. These three are the agencies that we see here. And uh, you can play with the text parameters, which is actually the uh, this particular UTC text when added. And I think you will get everything that is um, I'm not really sure, actually. I think you'll get everything that is more or equal to. So let's try. I'm just curious. I'm going to take this, uh, copy this one, copy, and put it here. So if I'm right, we should only get to. There you go. So this is how you can figure out. You get the latest one or you get all of them and then you figure out which ones you want to get based on that time. But uh, yeah, um, this is it, I guess. So uh, have fun. Thank you for watching.